Okay. There we go. That works. I can't believe I have to wear this in public, man. It's so embarrassing. Well, this is what off-roaders wear. We've got a job to do. And it's for the greater good. The, the greater, greater good. good. Watching Throttle Hess, I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And we're driving around in two of the most specialized vehicles you can possibly buy. Each of these is designed very carefully for a very specific intended purpose. And we've realized that since most owners that buy these never use them for their intended purpose, the public are starting to think that they're owned by posers, and that's not true. There are tens of owners that use these for their intended purpose. So our mission today is to re-educate the general public and show them that they're actually being used for what they're meant for. This is the G-Wagon 4x4 squared and the Lamborghini Urus Performante. But before we set out on our incredibly vital mission to represent the misunderstood G-Wagon and Urus owners, let's take a look at these two beasts. If a normal G63 isn't enough for you, you can spend only $200,000 more on the 4x4 squared. And that might seem like a lot, but if you think about it this way and you do the math, that's actually a, hmm, a G-Wagon 4 times 4 is 16 squared. So that's actually a G-Wagon 256. Wow. It might have the same 577 horsepower as the normal G63, but it's packed with off-road goodies. And we have it here today thanks to Unstoppable Automotive Group, who operates several luxury dealerships, including the dealership that loaned this to us, Mercedes-Benz of Temecula. Or for a humble $320,000 US as spec, you can get this Urus Performante. Even the name is an aphrodisiac to the performance that it promises later. Unlike that G256, it actually does have more power than the regular one, and lots more stuff besides. So it's time to let the people of Southern California know once and for all that ultra luxury, ultra performance SUVs like these are driven by real car enthusiasts. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. So the 4x4 squared, this is basically a lifted G-Wagon with portal axles. Portal axles are very cool, basically moves where the axle attaches to the hub, so I have a tremendous amount of ground clearance, which means I'm set for some very serious off-roading. But thankfully, I still have all of the G-Wagon comforts, right? He didn't cooled seats and all of that fancy luxury stuff and, and, and driving modes all the way up to Sport Plus. This car does have a twin turbo V8 and it is still quite quick. <laughs> yeah, it's still a G-Wagon engine though. It is handcrafted too. This one was done by by Daniel Schneebel. Isn't that, isn't that the substitute teacher from School of Rock? He's doing well for himself. All right, James, you ready to do this? Yeah, of course I'm ready. After today, every person in the world will know that Urus Porfomante owners are serious track rats. All right, just before I hit the car park, let me tell you about what it's like to live with an Urus Porfomante, because this is the hardcore one. This is the nuts one. It's over a hundred pounds lighter. It's got 15 more horsepower. It's not to 60, it's three tenths quicker than a normal Urus. Same amount of torque, but there's torque for days. Its wheel track is wider. It sits 0.8 inches lower to the ground because unlike the normal Urus, 
this sits on steel coils instead of air suspension because no race car can have air suspension if you want proper sports dynamics. So already, this is a hardcore race car, all right? Like the 22 inch wheels that it has, they come with Trofeo R tires. Granted, this spec has the 23 inch wheels that doesn't get the hardcore tires. And it, you know, it still has massaging seats, which add weight, and soft closed doors, which add weight, and ventilated seats. But I wanna be comfortable while I track this car. And yes, if you look carefully, it kind of has the same steering wheel as an Audi Q5, base Audi Q5. Now the ride is harsh, but that's the price you pay for ridiculous turning. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually very impressive, the front nose, the way it can turn in on this. I mean, the thing weighs 4,700 pounds. Around town here where the roads are smooth, absolutely livable. It's surprisingly good as a highway commuter because it's still insulated like an Urus, like an RSQ8. <laughs> but somewhere like Toronto or Michigan with harsh roads, yeah, you're gonna really feel the fact that you chose the Performante. But you're also gonna hear it because not only does it have a snappier transmission, it's more aggressive, it has an Akrapovich exhaust, which is part of the weight savings, but it also is so loud. Insane sounds coming from this car, insane. Batters against itself as you hit the rev limiter. Yeah, this is, this is not for posers. And now I gotta go tell people that. All right, James. I'm gonna take this parking lot here. You go up a little bit further and take that one. Got it? Got it. All right, we're gonna show the world there's some serious off-roading happen. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, another G-Wagon. I gotta go to the G-Wagon wave. There it is. All right, just gonna trail break into here. Oh, smooth. Oh, here's a guy, here's a guy. 129. Quarter afternoon. No, no, 129. I just did my personal best of the track in this. Oh, okay. And there was traffic as well. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Okay. All right, off road mode, off road mode. Show the people. Gotta keep my thumbs inside the wheel in case I. Yep. Oh, perfect technique. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. Such a track rat. You know, I'm gonna lock the diffs. Gotta get real. Huge. Thank God for portal axles. What was that? What the f did you just say? What the f did you? Oh, sorry, I thought you said RSQ8. Sorry. It's not, it's not one. Oh, yeah, a couple of sessions left. You call that off-roading? That's what my driveway looks like. I could do that in a Cavalier. That's what happens when you don't prioritize driver mod. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Wow. No, I know it's 4,700 pounds, but think of it like the GTR, right? The GTR uses its weight to create grip. And on the track, you know, with the turning and everything, it, it, you can't even feel that way. I, I just wanted to know where Chick-fil-A was. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good, yeah. You got it. No, a little bit of left hand down. Careful, careful, watch the diffs. Watch the diffs. Yeah, you got it. You got it, brother. You got it, all right. All right, let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, no fire blanket. Raw dogging it. Nice. Oh, these paved roads are such a waste of government spending. 1372-6548. Don't try and call me, babe. It's my uh, cylinder firing order. I'm just uh, raising the pressures because I was off-roading. You got to do that it's for more grip. Oh yeah, this needs an oil top up. I think it takes WD-40. Yup. Okay, time to find a Walgreens. 
Nice. Oh, you can't leave the handbrake on after a session like that. Amateurs. So, with a job clearly well done, we realised that it takes putting these two incredibly specialised vehicles side by side to understand how specialised and not status symbol showy-offy they really are. Oh. What's up? Hey. I was just checking out my, my off-roading stuff that I left on the top. On the, on the ceiling? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I might have to give this a second look over. I think I need some I new... I couldn't hear you from the broad side of this bus that I was driving. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I need some new pads, new rotors. 100%. Um, but otherwise, it's good to go. Mission accomplished? This is an interesting get-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my... This is what... Okay, listen, I don't really know what off-roaders wear. No. So I just went with... That's what? quite a gentle blue. What? Should it have, like, skulls on it or no, something? No, I just... Uh, you know... Uh, put it this way, if you... I'm going to invest in your craft beer company, no uh, problem. Oh, yeah. but you wouldn't follow me through, 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 through mud ruts? If you, if you got guts, if you got guts follow my ruts. Follow my ruts. Yeah, I'd follow, I'd follow your ruts, yeah. Actually, the, could you never say that to me ever again? No, well, that you sentence know, was not It's interesting weird. because I, yeah. I have this memory of you in the Subaru WRX saying that a refined lumberjack is just a barista. Ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I haven't had a chance to get it dirty yet. No. But mission accomplished, though, overall? Do oh, we yeah. feel that people have been educated? 100%. Yeah. Now, these are vitally important vehicles. 100%. Right? For when the water wars hit, you got, a, you got this choice of speed. Speed and you everywhere. You, go, you get to go everywhere. Everywhere. For, you know what? Now that they're next to each other, yeah. it's quite interesting, the similarities. Right? This is the performante. So, this, wait, sorry. The similarities? <laughs> well, they're both red. Uh, they good, both, yes. They both get marked up, and they yeah. both have carbon fiber wheel wells and oversized wheels. Oh yeah, yeah. That is, and they both have black shiny wheels, that's but cool. This is, but this is fancy, because this is the performance. So we've right. got a carbon fiber hood. Yeah, These oh, the whole hood is carbon fiber. Whole hood, carbon fiber inlets. Yeah. We've got a revised front end. We've yeah. got a rear spoiler back there. It says performante on the side. That's pretty cool. Although it doesn't have the Italian flag like the Huracan performante got. Oh. That's a bit of a shame. That is a bit of a bummer. But this is actually quite a good looking SUV. Is it a little bit lower? Yeah, well, this is, it's got different suspension, right? Yeah. This is on the coils, not the air suspension. Oh, so the ride is stiff. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, tell me about this monstrosity. Look at this thing, seriously. First of all, G-Wagons always look pretty boss in a, in a matte paint. It's a, it's a good paint. Right, it's, this, is, this looks amazing. And this, these are bigger fender flares, right? With the, oh, you can hang off of anything in this car. It's great. Check it. Ugh. See, you can climb up on the roof. These are the these are the, the light bars that are integrated into carbon fiber. For what reason, I don't really fully understand. It needed to be carbon fiber, but it looks amazing. Huge wheels, and of course, the portal axles. That's the biggest news. That's the right? biggest news. That's yeah. the biggest news. I mean, it's you know we were we stood next to a six by six Bravus recently. Yeah. And a Mega Raptor. Yes. So this is a baby compared, but it probably will work because it's not been modified. This, it looks like an authentic off-roading vehicle. Oh. You can do it as hard as you want, too, and it's just... Oh. Oh. I got a carpal tunnel from the racing of the Urus. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. The, you're supposed to have light hands, though. I just wanted to add that in. Side pipe exhaust, the ladder leading up to the top, the carbon fiber everywhere. It's amazing, honestly. It yeah. just looks great. Well, I think, I think th th these two cars are interesting because wherever you go, mall, pick up the kids from school, Yeah. You see these and you go, wow, that is a nice fella driving that. 100%. He probably is on his way to the shelter yeah. or the soup kitchen. He, definitely yeah. those two things. Yeah, which or is, alternatively, he's on his way to like a humble weekend track day. Humble, yeah. Or heading out to cross the desert to and, bring and, supplies <laughs> to malnourished people. And none of it's going on Instagram. Absolutely none of right? it. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll be there at your craft beer stall trying to get up and started. Has that even seen dirt, ever? No, you can't I'm, just get something the color of dirt and make it pretend, you know. I picked, yeah, I picked brown intentionally. Um, I bought it yesterday. Yeah, So. and I borrowed this, if we're, if we're confessing. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> it's a bit tight. <laughs> and I borrowed this. Yeah, well, I didn't buy that. I'll tell you that for free. Well, you can get this and a Bronco for the price of that. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's not, I'm not even talking about markup. Just for MSRP. MSRP. So you can still go off-roading. 
and have race car. Race car. And I think we've proved that this is completely a race car. This has been a massive success, and I think. And it's only used for off-roading. 100%. Yeah. Shall we do a conclusion? Yeah. Okay, so maybe our mission was a bit doomed from the beginning. It's unlikely that anyone's opinion on the way these vehicles will be used has shifted. But hey, we sure had a good time driving them around, and that got us thinking. Which one of them actually accomplishes a more specialized version of themselves? Because the Urus Performante is a more athletic Urus, but as an SUV, its sporting prowess already made it a bit of an oxymoron. No matter what you do, it's still an SUV and will be whooped by any other car in Lambo's lineup. Whereas the G63 4x4 squared is absolutely a better off-roader than a normal G-Class, which was already an off-road master. And if I'm being real for a moment, it's actually quite excellent to drive. It doesn't feel compromised at all. And even though the Lamborghini is full of proper upgrades, I mean, come on, only one of these two vehicles has a carbon fiber integrated light bar in its roof. Thomas, did you mention to the viewers that that light bar isn't even allowed to be hooked up in the US market? Like there isn't even a button to turn it on. Shut up. Thanks for watching.